Um, first of all, I want to say it's good to be back in this building. I, I spent six years on the MTC before uh, heading up to Sacramento, and I, uh, I, I'll be honest, it's one of the things I miss the most about being in local government because uh, uh, our regional work, it's taken on just a greater and greater role, and it's, it's so real. Uh, and so I, I'm just really continuing, I'm continually in awe of the work that happens regionally in the Bay Area. I think it's a model for the country uh, in a lot of ways. And a lot has changed since I first came on to the MTC. I came, went on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in January of 2011, and then in May went on to the MTC. Uh, and back then, I mean, it really wasn't that long ago, but it seems like it was a lifetime ago politically in terms of housing. Um, I still remember uh, you know, being on, on the Board of Supervisors and you'd have a controversial housing project and there was, other than the developer, and no offense to, to the developers, but there are limits to that advocacy, uh, there was almost no one even showing up in favor of housing. It was just opposition, opposition, opposition. When we did Plan Bay Area, and for those who were uh, part of that, it was a painful uh, process. And we had these weird things where the sort of the left and the right would come together all in the crusade of being opposed to housing and everyone can always think, there's always an excuse, whether you're a progressive excuse or a conservative excuse, there's always an excuse not to do housing, and, and it just plays on itself and it ends up really harming low-income and middle-class people. Uh, and the last uh, you know, four or five years, it's really, the dynamic has just shifted uh, in a very, very tangible way. And you know, this is one of those situations where the people um, I think fundamentally, I don't mean the people who um, are showing up at every planning commission hearing. I mean the people broadly are way ahead of where policymakers are. People get it that we don't have enough housing. They get it that when you create a ton of jobs and erect obstacle after obstacle after obstacle uh, in the way of housing that that is harmful. It's intuitive to people, it's common sense, and they get it. And so we need to play catch up, and we're starting to do that so that we are where the people are. Uh, and we are, uh, I think the political dynamic is there. Um, you know, the number of times uh, in, over the course of this year with SB 35, where we had the League of California Cities having an absolute meltdown for the entire year and trying to flame everyone up, the number of times that local city council members from around the state including from small communities, would come up to me and say, you know what, I can't say this publicly, but I'm so grateful for all the work that you and your colleagues are doing to try to make it easier to approve housing. Uh, because we have a situation where a lot of local elected officials um, you know, really do get it fundamentally, but feel handcuffed uh, in terms of their political future, in terms of the dynamic in their community, and that's where we have to help. Uh, we did, I think, a really good thing in the legislature uh, this year, and I want to thank everyone. There are a lot of people in this room who helped make that happen. And you know, the governor has 15 bills on his desk. He's indicated he's going to sign all of them, uh, and I think it's going to happen very, very soon. Uh, and uh, they fall into a couple of a few categories. One, uh, you know, I had the honor of authoring SB 35 uh, that will actually put teeth in the arena and say, if you're not meeting your arena goals, we're going to help you meet your arena goals by turning housing, whether it is low, for low-income people, for moderate income, at market rate, whatever you're missing, you're uh, re, not meeting your arena goals, whatever category you're not meeting your arena goals, will become streamlined. That means, means it's a ministerial permit. And we were able to build a coalition, even though that takes these projects out of CEQA entirely, a coalition of environmentalists, of affordable housing uh, nonprofit developers, uh, of labor, uh, of business, broad coalition to get that done, and we will finally have teeth in RENA. Um, we have uh, the most significant affordable housing funding package uh, that anyone can remember, particularly uh, uh, you know, removing redevelopment. The state has just been negative toward affordable housing. The state is finally starting to turn that around, uh, and it's only the beginning. We need a lot more state funding into affordable housing. Uh, we uh, passed a number of uh, bills uh, to stop the scamming of the housing element process. No more of this, you know, I know there's a, a shopping center there that's, that's not going anywhere, but that's where we're going to put our low-income housing. 
in that already developed area that's never, ever, ever going to be developed. No more of that. We strengthen the Housing Accountability Act uh, so that uh, communities that are tempted to arbitrarily deny projects, to arbitrarily downzone, there will actually be enforceability and penalties for doing that. Uh, so we strengthened laws that were on the books that had no real enforcement, and then we added new tools in terms of funding and streamlining. Uh, but it's really important to be clear that this package, as important as it was, uh, I like to describe it as a healthy down payment. This is a first step. And, and sometimes, a concern that I sometimes have in the legislature, uh, and I have the same concern with SB1, our transportation funding measure, is this, this temptation to say, okay, we checked the box, we're done, we did housing. I don't want to deal with that anymore, it was too painful. And we can't allow my, the legislature to do that. We can't allow uh, this governor, I don't think needs much persuasion, but whoever the next governor is, we have to be clear that housing is, if not the number one issue, then among the top, top issues facing the state. Um, we know that it's harming our environment. We know that it is tearing families apart. Uh, we know that it is going to really harm our economy. Um, as employers decide they don't want to expand here because their workers can't find housing. And we need to hold the legislature and the governor accountable, all of us, to keep doing more. Uh, and we have more work uh, that we can do. Uh, next year we're going to be doing more uh, housing work. It might not be get as much attention as it got this year. It might not be as sexy. But we have work to do. We have to reform RENA. RENA is broken, it's overly politicized, it has no correlation to what our actual housing needs are in terms of how it's set up. It's not a criticism of anyone who does RENA. It's such a hyper-politicized process and it needs to be more data-based and that'll help everyone in this room. Uh, we have just a lot more work to do and we're gonna do that. And so, the, but the other piece of that um, is we have to keep, I think, in my view, shifting the political dynamic. Uh, we need to make it easier for local elected officials to cast votes in favor of housing. And I think the dynamic is there when you look at the broad population. The more people we get engaged in the process, we shift that dynamic. We need to give cover to people in elected office who are making these hard decisions. Uh, we also, uh, I, the, the Bay Area has such a huge role to play because even though this is a statewide problem, we are at the epicenter. The Bay Area can play a really significant role in piloting and trying new things in terms of how to get more housing done more quickly, but continuing to push the legislature. So I look forward to partnering with this region uh, to come up with new ideas that we move at a state level to support efforts that you're doing at a local and a regional level and to really move forward together because there's so much more work to do. So thank you for everything and uh, I hope you have a wonderful productive meeting today.